Our top story on this Tuesday, the Colorado man police say killed his pregnant wife and two daughters is now saying his deceased wife was a murderer, according to an affidavit released yesterday. Christopher Watts will be in court today to learn more about the nine felony charges filed against him. CBS's Laura Podesta has more. Christopher Watts says he went into a rage and killed his wife after she strangled their two daughters. But Colorado prosecutors filed formal charges against Watts, accusing the 33-year-old of killing his entire family. Three counts of murder in the first degree after deliberation. One count naming Shanann Watts, one count naming Bella, one count naming Celeste. Watts is also charged with three counts of tampering with a body and one count of unlawful termination of a pregnancy. Mommy has a baby in her belly. Okay. Shanann was pregnant with a boy they were going to name Nico. According to the arrest affidavit released yesterday, Watts was involved in an affair with a co-worker and last Monday he told his wife he wanted a separation. Shortly after that conversation, Watts said he checked a baby monitor and saw one of his daughters sprawled out and blue and witnessed his wife strangling the other child. That's when he says he strangled Shanann. Please bring her back. But the next day, Chris pleaded for their safe return and was asked by local media if they got into an argument. It wasn't like an argument. We had an emotional conversation, but I'll leave it at that. Watts later told police he loaded all three bodies into his truck and took them to an oil field where he worked. Prosecutors say it's too early to determine whether they'll pursue the death penalty. Laura Podesta, CBS News, New York. Also making headlines this Tuesday morning, two men are behind bars in Nashville in connection with three recent murders and a rash of violent robberies. 20-year-old Demontre Lodgson was arrested last night and 24-year-old LaCroix Cody Little turned himself in. A law enforcement source tells CBS News the men might be linked to the homicide based on surveillance images and physical evidence. And President Trump will be in West Virginia today to promote a rollback of former President Obama's clean power plan. The president wants to give states broad authority to determine how to restrict carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gas emissions from coal-fired power plants. The plan would also let states relax pollution rules for power plants that need upgrades. The president has already vowed to pull the U.S. out of the Paris Climate Agreement and is pushing to revive the coal industry. In Wyoming, voters head to the polls today to decide crowded primary races for governor, U.S. Senate, and U.S. House. A poll released last Wednesday surveyed 1,775 Wyoming voters using a mix of cell phone and landline calls along with emailed surveys. The survey has a margin of error of 2.35 percent. The poll shows the Republican governor's race appears to be a virtual dead heat. Multi-millionaire Froster Freeze, who has spent nearly two and a half million dollars of his own money so far leads current Wyoming treasurer Mark Gordon 21 percent to 20 percent. Harriet Hagman runs a close third with 16.2 percent. Businessman Sam Galliotis is running a distant fourth with 9.5 percent and the two other candidates Taylor Haynes and Bill Dolan are at the bottom of the poll. 19.9 percent of those polled say they're still undecided while nearly six percent say they've already voted. In today's other top races, incumbent U.S. Senator John Barrasso faces five other GOP candidates. Businessman Dave Dotson has invested more than $1 million of his own money in his campaign. The winner will face Democrat Gary Trauner in November. In the U.S. House race, incumbent Congresswoman Liz Cheney faces two challengers in her first bid for re-election. Two Democrats, Greg Hunter and Travis Helm, face off for Wyoming's Democratic House nomination. Well, three weeks after a family float trip turned deadly near Livingston, the body of a 15-year-old boy has been recovered from the Yellowstone River. James Anderson's body was recovered Sunday near Springdale, some 20 miles from where he went missing back in July. The Park County and Gallatin County Sheriff's Office says a fisherman discovered the body on Sunday and alerted authorities. Members of the Gallatin County Sheriff's Office responded immediately and recovered the body of Anderson, who was the son of Gallatin County Sheriff's Captain Jim Anderson. The boy went missing July 27th when the family's drift boat capsized at the Highway 89 bridge east of Livingston. We're thankful uh, that we're able to return James to his family. Um, we're hoping that by doing so we'll bring some closure 
uh, to Jim and, and his family, and this was just such a, an, an un, unbelievable tragedy to have something like this happen, um, to lose his wife and 15-year-old son. I just can't imagine going through that. So we're just happy to be able to, to bring James home. Anderson's mother, Angie, also died in the accident. Jim Anderson and his daughter were able to make it safely to shore. Meanwhile, a Montana woman is now recovering in a Billings hospital following a June rock climbing accident that left her severely injured and permanently disfigured. On June 30th, Kayleen Murphy was climbing with her boyfriend at Natural Bridge outside of Big Timber. Murphy's parents say as Kayleen served as the anchor for her climbing partner, a six foot slab of rock broke off. The force caused brain injury, broken ribs, a fractured vertebrae, and severed part of her leg and hand. She was flown to Billings where doctors amputated part of her arm and most of her leg. MTN spoke with Kayleen's parents about the moments following the accident and their daughter's amazing recovery and positive attitude. The main thing to me at that point was I had asked, is she still alive? Just tell me she's still alive. And I knew if she was alive, then we could get through anything else. Her attitude is incredible, and we just see God working every single day in our lives. Kayleen will soon undergo physical therapy, rehab, and prosthetics. Crystal says Kayleen hopes to teach people of the importance of using a helmet and can't wait to climb again. Elsewhere, the Montana Division of Criminal Investigation is now in Great Falls to investigate after police shot and killed an armed suspect. Just before 7 o'clock Sunday night, Great Falls police responded to a disturbance when they found Charles Marcotte armed with multiple weapons, including a semi-automatic rifle. Marcotte first threatened, then shot at officers. Police returned to gunfire, killing Marcotte. The four officers involved in the shooting are now on administrative leave. We recognize this is a difficult time for the officers involved, as well as for our entire agency. And we want each of them and their families to know how much we support them. As peace officers, taking a human life is something that we pray we're never forced to. However, in the course of our responsibilities, sometimes it's necessary. This is the fourth shooting involving a Great Falls police officer in the last 18 months. Also out of Great Falls, MTN spoke with one of the men who stopped a knife-wielding suspect in the Great Falls Walmart store on Sunday. One of them turned and looked at me and said, no, he's got a knife. And the guy who had the knife swung it at me and I kind of moved back. Police were called around 4 p.m. for reports of a woman who had been stabbed. Joseph Bro was there as it unfolded. We took him to the ground. I, I know that there were some other people right there with me when it happened. Um, I was right over the top of him on the ground and there was a, somebody working on the hand with a knife, trying to get the knife out of his hand and somebody else on the other side of me just making sure he stayed in place. Police say this man, Stephen Freeman, placed a woman in a headlock and then held a pocket knife to her neck. While trying to escape, she suffered wounds to her wrist and hand. Court documents state Freeman admitted to driving to Walmart to hurt people. Freeman has been charged with two counts of assault with a weapon and one count of obstructing a peace officer.